So let's talk about series parallel circuits. I mean, if you have a good understanding of series circuits and of parallel circuits, then you're ready to jump into this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lean heavily on everything we've learned from series and parallel circuits concerning Kirchhoff's current laws and Kirchhoff's voltage laws, and also how we add up resistances. It's really very important that we, you really understand how to add up the resistances in a parallel circuit and a series circuit, and understand how to apply Ohm's law to all of the components, neither a series or a parallel circuit, knowing and understanding Kirchhoff's laws. If you've got all that figured out, plus the really cool thing about power, I'm just gonna tell you this now, the really cool thing about power in both a series circuit and a parallel circuit, the formula is the same. I mean, the total power is the total power of the resistance, the power of R1 plus the power of R2 plus power of R3. Whether it's series or parallel, it doesn't matter. It's really cool that it's the same case for a series parallel circuit, but everything else is different. Actually, everything else is a matter of figuring out how to apply Kirchhoff's laws so that we can apply Ohm's law. Let's move forward. Now, the definition of a parallel series circuit or a series parallel circuit is that there is an element that is in series with another element that is in parallel. Now, it could be that some of those parallel components also have series components, and that's an this is an example here. So, R1 is in series with everything else. So, I can say that this leg, these two legs here, they are uh, together as kind of one component that is in series with R1. Now, we can see that this leg has two resistors in it that are in series. So, if we wanted to apply Ohm's law, we really have to see the series portions and the parallel portions and apply Kirchhoff's laws accordingly. So, but we can also say that the total current is the total resistance and, and the, pardon me, the total current is the total voltage or the voltage source divided by the total resistance. How do we calculate the total resistance? Actually, there are a lot of other things that we need to think about how to calculate. Let's define what a series and parallel circuit is. Essentially, what's going on, further definition of this, what's going on here, this is a, this is a really simple series parallel circuit. It gets a, a little bit more complicated as we add more things in. In this case, I mean, it, this, this, this is crazy. These are like, really? Well, just let's just unpack this. If I only look at this portion of the circuit, those two, seri those two resistors are in series. We know that. Now, they're in parallel with that. Okay, so if we take a look at this whole thing, we can say that it is in series with this whole thing. And this whole thing is made up of two branches. One branch has got two series and one branch has just got one resistor. So I'm hoping this is making sense to you. So let's just move on and continue looking at these. Now let's just take a look at something we call resistor notation because I think we'll define further what a series parallel resistance, what a series parallel circuit is as we just move forward and study this stuff. So just move forward and let's talk about the resistor notation for a series parallel circuit. This resistor notation will help you define how to write down the nature of the total resistance of a circuit. Now, practicing this and wrapping your head around this type of notation will also, uh, it's good practice to wrap your head around how the circuit's put together according to Kirchhoff's laws, or more specifically, the series element and the parallel element I'll say that again, the series elements and the parallel elements, because sometimes it gets really complicated. In this case, there's only one parallel element and one series element. So I can say this plus whatever the resistor notation is for these two in parallel. And that's just R2 slash slash R3. So when we put those two slashes together, we're defining that those two resistors are connected in parallel. Sometimes it gets a little bit more complicated. Let's take a look. I've got a series parallel circuit here. I've got three parallel branches. Each branch is made up of two series resistors. So how do I write that with this notation? We know that any two resistors in parallel, we write the name of the resistor, slash slash the name of the other resistor, but how do we define the name of this? Well, we use brackets. So that's where brackets come in. So I know that these two are in series together, and that's fine. I can say that they're in series together and they're in parallel with this and in parallel with this. So I'm just gonna use the parallel symbol to indicate two elements are in parallel. If you can look at it this way, there are three branches here. One of the branches can be defined as R1 plus R2. That is in parallel with the other branch that is defined as R3 plus R4. 
So uh, continuing on, let's just take a look at some of these. This is a little bit crazy. Sometimes it's nice to when you see a more complicated series parallel circuit to try and break it down, simplify it a little bit, understanding that um, this spot right here electrically, I, I'm going to say this spot where my mouse is. It's the same as this spot. It's the same as this spot. All of these spots along the way, everything here electrically has the same potential voltage. So it's actually the same point. And what I can do is I can actually bring this up to here and bring that up to there. And then um, it kind of looks a little bit better. In this case, this, this is easy. This is series. This is one resistor in series with another portion of the circuit that is made up of three parallel branches, where one of the branches has two series elements in it. But this is a nice, easier way to kind of look at this. But understanding how to make this turn into this is the point where any point along here, even this point right here, this point and that point and this point and this point and this point and this point, they're all electrically the same. So I can just attach this right to here because this is just one big piece of metal. Or as far as the electrons are concerned, they see it as one point. There you go. So um, the re resistor notation now is going to be R1 plus that in parallel with this in parallel with this. But of course, when we look at it over here, just feels better. So it's R1 in series with R2 in parallel with R3 in parallel with this branch here, which is called R4 plus R5. And that's what that's all about. So I think I think you're starting to get this. I think it's starting to make sense, this notation. You may, let me just visit this again. The reason we have this notation is because at some point we need to know the total resistance of a circuit. So this is going to help us. Now, this is not a formula. It's just a, a way of, of writing down the relationship between how we calculate the total resistance. And then we're actually going to figure out how to turn this into a formula momentarily. So this is a pretty cool circuit here. This is in um, series with this. And each three of those are in parallel. You see that? This point all along here is the exact same point. We can look at it another way. Sometimes if you try and put a ground symbol in, it helps a little bit. Um, so I'm looking at this, I'm saying, okay, R3 are in parallel. Actually, R3 and R4 are directly connected here, which is directly connected here, which is directly connected here. So R2 is in parallel with these guys. And those guys are in parallel together. So R2 is in parallel with R4 is in parallel with R3. It's another way of looking at it. This is probably a little bit more confusing. Doing this kind of helps a little bit. I don't know. I could put that ground all the way up here, however you want to do it. It's sometimes beneficial to stick a ground symbol in. Now, this one is a little bit more tricky. Oh, by the way, here this is the resistor notation. R1 plus all of these three in parallel. This one's a little bit more tricky because we've actually got three things in parallel. There are different ways of looking at this. We have three things in parallel, and one of them is more complicated. I'll show you this. I'll just tell you the answer. R1 is in series with all of this stuff. R2 is in parallel. Actually, I lied to you. I said there were three things in parallel. Really, there, when we look at a bigger picture, there are two things in parallel here. One of those things is more complicated. Let's, let's, let's take a look at this. R1 is in series with everything. Pardon me. All the current goes through R1. All of it. So all the current goes through here. It gets here, and then it's divided up amongst these guys. Well, essentially, there are two legs to a parallel nature or a parallel circuit that's here. One leg is R2. The other leg is all of this. Let's take a look at this a different way. Again, putting grounds in helps. So I've got R all the current goes through R1, and then some of the current can go through R2, and the other option is it can go through this branch here, all of this stuff here, where it goes here. This whole thing is made up of R3 in parallel with R4 in series with R5. So R3 in parallel with R4 in series with R5 is in parallel with R2. I'll say that again. I'm going to give you the resistor notation here. R3 and R4 are in parallel, obviously. And they're in series with R5. I mean, if you just look at this, I think you're OK with that. Now, that is also in parallel with R2. And all of this is in series with R1. So if I want to write the resistor notation, I'm going to write R1 plus R2 in parallel with whatever. however I write this down. The way I write that down is I'm going to put a bracket. The way I write all of this is this in parallel with this plus that. And that's going to be in a bracket. 
Okay, let's move on. I know you may need to kind of go back and sit with this for a bit, but you can pause the video. Okay, good. So this is an example where everything's in parallel. I've just added, I put things all kind of weird and funky on different angles and stuff because it helps you kind of practice understanding that this is electrically all one point. Okay, good. Actually, so is this. This is all electrically one point. So these are all in parallel together. Now, all of these guys, this is in parallel with this guy and that is in parallel with this. You see that? Again, this point right here, that point right there is the same as this point, is the same as that point. So this, anything connected to there and there going to ground or going back to here is going to be in parallel. So this is in parallel with this, is in parallel with this. So the, how I, I put the, the total resistor notation is R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with these guys added up together, R3 plus R4 in a bracket. There you go. So again, this is just practice. You can go back over those again. What I want to do now is I just want to start to apply Ohm's law, um, Kirchhoff's laws, and um, understanding the total resistive nature of a circuit and put it into practice. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use uh, Ohm's law. We're going to, you know, I just said that, but one of the things I think I want to stop and pause on is that we're going to learn how to use the voltage divider and the current divider. There are a lot of really complicated slides on that. I have an entire other video just focusing on that. So you can watch that video. I'll put the link to that at the end of this video. Okay, so let's just let's just walk through here. If I wanted to take a look at the total resistive nature of this, another way I can look at it is to actually just do the math in the, with the individual portions and then just add it all up together. But in, in, for instance, 100 and 100, if I put two 100 ohm resistors together, their total resistance is 50 ohms. And they're in series with this resistor here, which is 50 ohms. So I just know intuitively that the total resistance of this circuit is 100 ohms. And, and I hope you understand that too. I'll just say that one more time. These guys are in parallel together. Each one, they're even, they're, they're the same value. So I know that their total resistance is just half the value. I mean, you can do the math, but when you do the math, you'll end up, that'll show 50. Okay, good. So that's 50 and that's in series with 50. So it's 100 ohms. So we can just understand it before so that we can check our values. It's important that you estimate what the value is going to be so that when you do do the calculation, you're looking at it and you're like, yeah, that feels right. Or it doesn't feel right. That's important as well. Here you go. So um, there's that example. Now, there are a whole bunch of examples here for this circuit. What I'm doing is I'm giving you resistor notation and I'm saying, try and figure that out and turn it into a formula because the resistor notation is not a formula. So in this case, it's really easy. This, these are all in parallel. In this case, those three are parallel with this. Now, all of these numbers here, so R1 represents 10 ohms, R2 is represented by 20 ohms, R3 is 30 ohms or the value. So you can go ahead and do the math here and I'll just show you the answers and you can, you can sit with these. Okay, so you can try these in your calculator. So you can just pause this right now. I hit these, get your calculator out, try and figure out how to do this. Um, and once you know that, then you can continue with this video. Here we go. Um, right, and the, actually I'll show you some crazy circuits. There are more here and more. I just started making up crazy stuff. Now, you're not gonna see circuits that complicated in, in any kind of real circuit, maybe. I don't know, I've never seen a circuit that complicated. What I'm doing is I'm making some crazy complicated circuits for you to practice with. Let's just take a look at this circuit over here. So I got a thing over here. That's a crazy circuit. Like that, I don't know, I, you'll never see this circuit, but this is the resistor notation for this circuit. Sit with it, try and figure out why this is true. Obviously R5 is in series, is in parallel, pardon me, with everything else. So I'm putting brackets here. That's why the brackets there. So I'm gonna go back here. Uh, this one's even crazier, uh, really? So do R7 is definitely in series with everything. And you know what, R1 and R2 together are in series with everything else too. So R1 and R2 is in series with everything else. So you can sit with those and, and, and kind of look at them. What I've done is I've used some color codes here because this gets a little bit complicated and color coding things kind of, kind of helps because, you know, especially with brackets, um, if you do any uh, programming in Excel or, or if you put a, pardon me, a formula in an Excel sheet and it's really complicated and there are a lot of brackets, the colors will pop up and it's really nice. It's very helpful. So I like to use colors when I'm doing really complicated circuits. So this last red one and that last red one, I want to make sure that I add them all up so that I know that I haven't missed a bracket and making colors for them 
kind of complementary. Like there's if there's an in bracket, there's got to be an out bracket. And if I make them in the same color, that helps. So this is just a whole bunch of resistor notation stuff. And these are some numbers. And you can work with these and, and try and figure them out as you go. Again, you can pause the video and try and figure this. Try and do that on your calculator. Um, and if you're not getting this, do it until you figure out how to do it properly. Now what I want to do is I actually want to move on and, and take a look. Here's another resistor notation, total resistance. Let's take a look at an example where we're going to add in Ohm's law and do all of these things. What we're going to do here is we're going to try and figure out what the current through R4 is. Now, we have to remember that that's also the current through R3. So I could just say, you know, what's the current through the branch, this branch here, the R3, R4 branch? Or I could just say, what's the current through R4? I mean, if I knew the voltage drop across R4, I could easily calculate it. But I don't think that's going to be the focus here. I want to look at the bigger picture, and I want to know the total current going in. And, uh, well, technically, that's going to allow me to use Kirchhoff's voltage law to be able to find the voltage at point A, or VA, the voltage potential at point A, which is also going to give me the voltage drop across here. Okay, let's just move forward. So it's easy for me to find out the voltage drop across here because I can use Ohm's law individually for this resistor, knowing its value and knowing the current going through it. So now I have the voltage drop across it. I know it's 50 volts. Okay, so my source voltage is 100 volts. So my voltage potential at point A is 50 volts because I've got two things that are in series. I've got this and this parallel branch, or this parallel element of the circuit that are um, in series together. So I know the voltage drop across this parallel element of the circuit is 50 volts. Actually, I know the voltage drop across R3 and R4 is 50 volts. So if I wanted to know the current going through here, well, there are actually a few ways I can do that. I can actually use the voltage divider, which we won't do that because it gets a little bit complicated. What you're going to do is you're just going to say, okay, well, I, if, I, if I wanted to know the current through R4, I could just calculate the current through this entire branch. So I know the voltage across the entire branch. I know the current through the entire branch is going to be current through R4 with my subscripts, writing down the subscripts properly, documenting all of your variables. Um, the current through R4 is going to be VA, the voltage potential at A, divided by the total resistance of this leg. And there you go. So now I know the current through there. It's 250 milliamps. You see how we've applied Kirchhoff's laws, uh, Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law, also Ohm's law, um, but specific to a particular location in this circuit. I, I think it's a matter of practice for you to really get your head around how to apply Kirchhoff's laws to these circuits so that you can really understand how you can take Ohm's law and put it into that circuit. And then once you do practice that a little bit, then you can jump into trying to figure out how to use the current divider formula and the circuit, I mean, and the voltage divider formula for these things, because that gets pretty complicated. Okay, here we go. Hold on to your seat. <laughs> this is, we're going to look at the current divider formula and the voltage divider formula for a series parallel circuit. I just want to stop and pause. Okay, so using Kirchhoff's voltage laws and Ohm's law, we can solve all of this stuff, as you know, and it's, it's also powerful to use the current divider formula and the voltage divider formula because it saves steps. So we're just going to take a look at the, what the total resistance is for the voltage and current divider formulas. What the total current is and or the total voltage is for the current divider formula and the voltage divider formula. Just follow me. So what I'm taking a look at is, let's just take a look at this. If I knew I2, if I knew this current going in here, I know that I2, that current, would be divided amongst R3 and R4. So if I did know that a certain amount of current was going through here, which would be the total current, so the source is here, the total current is going here, that is going to be the current from here and the current from there. So the current through I1, or I1 and I2, so I1 plus I2 is the total current. So the total current is I1 plus I2. Now, I want to use the current divider formula to figure out how much current is going through R3. Not R1, not even R2, just R3. I know that R3 and R4 are dividing are, sorry, are dividing I2. Okay, get this. The current here, I2, is being divided up amongst two, only two resistors, two resistors, R3 and R4. So if I knew the total resistance of those two resistors, 
and the current going into those two resistors, I can use the current divider formula to figure out how they divide up the current, how those two resistors divide up the current. So with that said, um, when I put in this formula, this is the basic formula for the current divider formula. It does not change at all, except the things I put in here are going to change. It's perspective is it's so important that you understand it's not the entire resistance. It's not the total current. It's whatever section of the circuit you're looking at. So in this case, what I'm going to say here is that I2 is the current that's being divided. So it's going to be the IT. It's going to be the volt, I mean the current that I'm going to put here, because it's divided in a way relative to the resistors that are dividing it. So this RT is going to be the total resistance of the resistors that are dividing it. Rx is going to be <coughs> the resistor in question. So in this case, it's R3. So my current through R3 is going to be the current into here, into this node, which is I2. And the total resistance is going to be the total resistance of this resistor and this resistor, because that's the total resistance of the resistors that are dividing the current. I think I've unpacked that enough. So here we go. It's just this, this I guess I could have unpacked that here as well. Um, here's just an example. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this. Everything I just said, we're going to actually do the math for this. Okay, good. So what I want to do is I want to calculate the total resistance of the whole thing. Of the whole thing. So RT. RT is going to be um, R1 and then plus all of this in parallel for the total resistance of the entire circuit. And then we're going to look at whether we need to use that. Now let's take a look at IT. IT is going to be the source voltage divided by the entire resistance. And that's the total current going in there. Now, we're not going to be using those values to calculate just this little portion of the circuit. Does that make sense? I've just calculated the entire resistance and the total, res the total current. But I'm zooming into just a part of the circuit. And I want to analyze what's going on just in that part of the circuit with a specific formula called the current divider formula. So it's good to have these things and always store this stuff in your calculator. Always store it in your calculator. Did I get all excited about that? Start in a calculator. <laughs> because ultimately, with series parallel circuits, there are so many steps. You need to store everything in your calculator. Okay, moving forward. Let's 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 go ahead and take a look at more. Now, what I need to do is I'm going to take a look at the current divider formula, which is here. Now, IR1, IR1 here is going to be really easy to calculate because I know the voltage here and I know the resistance here. But if I were to use the current divider formula to find IR1, I mean, we can find Ohm's law pretty easily because we know the voltage drop across there and we know the um, value of that resistor of R1. So I could find just Ohm's law and I could do that really easily. You know what, I'm just gonna do that on my calculator right now. So I've got 50, 50 divided by 560 and that's going to be 89.8285 uh, milliamps. Oh, looks like that's what this is calculating as well, but I'm doing this with the current divided formula. I'm stepping out, I'm looking at the bigger picture now. If I wanted to use the current divider formula, there are two legs in this, the two branches in this entire circuit, in this series parallel circuit. There are two branches. Those two branches are in parallel. If I wanted, I could use the, uh, I could use the current divider formula to calculate the current through R1 or the first branch or even the second branch. So in this case, the bigger picture, I'm taking a look at the entire circuit that has two branches. I need to know how those two branches divide up the current because I'm looking for the current through R1. It's one of the branches. So I need the entire resistance and I need the entire current. And then I'm going to look how those two branches divide that up. So in this case, this is my formula here. So IR1, the current here, is going to be the total current times some resistance ratio of resistances. In this case, it's the entire resistance of both branches divided by the resistance of the one branch I'm looking at. So I put my numbers in and then I end up with this. And you know what? That it looks, it makes sense. Because when I did it on my calculator, I ended up with that value. When I did it just Ohm's law, it was easy. Now, if you actually know the voltage, the voltage drop across the resistor and you know its value, you're not going to use a current divider. But what we've done is we've started bigger and we're going to zoom in. We're going to use the current divider formula 
continue to use the current divider formula here. So, so in this case, if I wanted to know the current here, if I wanted to know I2, okay, so I want to calculate, the, I want to use the current divider formula to calculate I2. Again, I've got two branches. One is the branch with R1, and the other is the branch that's more complicated, this thing with the circle around it. I need to know the total resistance of the whole thing, plus I need to know the resistance of the branch that is dividing the current. In this case, I need to know the total resistance of this branch. I hope that's okay. Now, listen to this. See this R2 here? Okay, R2 is a resistor. I could use Ohm's law. If I knew the voltage drop across R2, I could use Ohm's law here and the value, and I could calculate the current through R2. That would actually be the current through this entire branch. But in this case, I'm going to use Ohm's law. I mean, I'm going to use the current divider formula, knowing the current going in here, knowing the entire resistance, knowing the resistance of this branch, and I'm going to put them in everything together. So what is RT? In this case, it's the total resistance of the big picture of these two branches. What's RX? Well, it's the resistance of the branch I want to study the current going through. And that's this. That's this guy right here. So it's going to be R3, um, R4. It's going to be R2 plus R3 in parallel with R4. Okay, good. So now... Um, Let's just actually do the math. So IR2 using the current divided formula is going to be the total current, which in this case is 182.28 milliamps. Let's just find out where we calculated that originally. Here, this was the original calculation with the total resistance. That's the current going through here. It's getting divided amongst here and here. Good. So uh, we know that value is going to be 182 milliamps times um, this resistance here, which is the total resistance of the entire circuit, divided by just the resistance of this. There you go. So this is resistor notation, and I'm just turning it into a formula here with some numbers in it. I'm just jumping straight to the numbers. And then I can calculate it, and it's 92. And you know what? We calculated this to be 89.2856, whatever, something. 285, yeah, 6. Uh, milliamps, and we calculated this now uh, of 92, and 92 plus um, 20, uh, 80, sorry, 89 something is about 190, 182. So it, it makes sense. This current plus this current equals that current. So this has worked. Again, I could have used Ohm's law. If I knew the entire resistance of this, and I know its voltage drop, I know the voltage drop across this branch of this circuit is 50 volts. And if I knew the total resistance here, I could have just used Ohm's law and I would have calculated the same thing. But my point is, when we're using the current divider formula, the most important thing I'm trying to tell you is that the total resistance in this case is the total resistance. But the, and the total current was the total current. But what if I wanted to just zoom down into just here? What if I wanted to just look at this? So in this case, the current that's being divided is I2, which I've calculated, which is 92 milliamps. And now what I want to do is I want to say the total resistance of this divided by the resistance of whichever I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for the current through R3. So you know what? You can just forget about all of this. All we have is this little, this little portion of the circuit. Remove it away in your mind. Take it away. Run away with it. And you're going to say, this portion of the circuit is what I'm analyzing right now. What's the current going into that? It's I2. What's the current that's, what are the resistors that are dividing it? Oh, it's R3 and R4. That's it. So I think that makes sense. I think you, you're getting it. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to talk about how to use the voltage divider formula in this series parallel circuit. Specifically, we're going to use this circuit here where we're going to take a look at this this branch over here. Because, you know, I, I can't actually use the voltage divided formula to calculate how much voltage is across R, R1 because it's not dividing the voltage. I have to find the portion of the circuit where voltage is being divided. And I think that's a good way of looking at it. In this case, the portion of the circuit where voltage is being divided is in this branch. So uh, I know that R2 and this section here that's parallel are dividing the voltage. Depending on what their resistances are, they're going to divide the voltage in a certain way. Let's just, let's just postulate something. Let's just say, what if this was 500 here? That was 500 ohms. That was 1,000 and that was 1,000. 
If these were 1,000 each, their total resistance would be 500 ohms. And this is 500 ohms. So they're going to divide the voltage evenly. So if I were looked at the voltage potential at point B, it would be 25 volts. It would be half of the source voltage because this is dividing it evenly with these guys. So what I need to do is I need to establish how I can apply the voltage divided formula. Specifically, what's RT? What's VS? And, and just like we did before with the current divided formula, we have to unpack that part of the circuit. For this part of the circuit, VS is actually VS. I will show you a different example where VS isn't VS, uh, but in this case it is. Now, what's RT? Well, RT is actually the total resistance here of the resistors that are dividing the voltage. R1's not dividing the voltage. It's got nothing to do with the total resistance. So, um, moving forward, let's just do the math and take a look at this. So, I'm going to take the source voltage, which is seen right here, and if I want the voltage drop across R2, I'm going to take the source voltage, and I'm going to multiply it by R2 and divide it by the total resistance. So, the ratio of the resistors that are dividing the, the, total, the, the voltage, pardon me, um, is this guy compared to the entire series component of the circuit. So there you go. And then that's 30.7 uh, volts. So keep that in your calculator. What I want to do is I want to continue on and take a look at what the voltage drop across these guys are. Like I said before, if this was 500 and that was 500, they'd, they'd be dividing it evenly. But in this case, these values are different. So let's do the math and study the nomenclature. Study uh, what my subscripts are going to look like when and how to how to apply that into the voltage divided formula how to write it down what does it look like uh, when i'm going to use the voltage divided formula to calculate the voltage uh, across here or vb in this case what we got here is we got the same total resistance except the voltage i mean the resistance on top is going to be the resistance of these guys so i'm going to say the resistance of two and three in parallel divided by the total resistance is the resistance ratio. And then I'm gonna multiply that by the voltage that's right here, which is the source voltage. And I'm gonna, I get this much value. So I'm gonna get 19 point some odd. Now, I wanna check my work, or at least when you're looking at your numbers, just look at them and say, does that feel right? So if the voltage drop across here is 19, and the voltage drop across here is 30 or 31, does that feel like it's 25? It does. Let's just double check and do the math and we can see, yeah, if we add them up, we get 50. Now what I wanna do is show you a quick example about where VS in the voltage divider formula isn't VS because we're dealing with a different, we're gonna we're going go deeper into a more complicated circuit. Um, and then I'm gonna jump into talking about power in a parallel series circuit and then that'll be it. So bear with me, here we go. Let's take a look at this crazy circuit. Now in this case, if I wanted to know what the voltage at point B was, what, how do I write that down? And, and what is it? What's it gonna be? Well, I know the total resistance is gonna have nothing to do with this. It's also gonna have nothing to do with this. It's gonna be the total resistance of this branch because if I knew A, if I knew the voltage at A and I wanted to know the voltage at B, then I would just take a look at this part of the circuit. So my formula would be VA times this resistance divided by this resistance. And you can see that here. It's my VB is going to be VA times this resistance. So that's going to be R4 in parallel with R5 plus R6 over this plus this plus this. Because that and that, this plus this and plus that all together is the total resistance of this. And that's how, the, how you're going to do that. Now, let me just explain how you would solve this. Well, I need to know the voltage at VA. If I actually had the voltage at VA, that'd be it. If I just knew VA, I could, I could put it right in here because I have all of these values. But how do I find VA? Well, there are probably several ways to do it. But the way I think I would do it was I would find the voltage drop across this. And to find the voltage drop across that, I would use Ohm's law and I'd find the current through this. And in this case, it's pretty cool. The, the, the current going through R1 is IT. It's all of the, all of the current goes through R1, all of it. So the voltage drop across this plus the value of this will represent how much current is going through it. So I'm actually going to calculate the total current here and then that'll give me the current through there and then I can use that to calculate the voltage drop and then I'm going to subtract that from Vs. Now, how do I find the total current? Well, I need the total resistance and I have the source voltage. 
So I'm going to find the total resistance, then I'm going to find the total current, and I'm, then I'm going to use Ohm's law to find the voltage drop across this. I'm going to subtract that from here, and then I'll know VA. And then I can plug it in there. It has many steps to the formula, but if you do them all right and you document them properly, other people will be under, uh, understand what you've written, and you will be able to understand. Let's talk about power. Cool. So what's going on? I just love power in a series parallel circuit because it, the, the formula for power in a series parallel circuit is is the exact same as all of the other formulas for a parallel circuit, a series circuit, in that it's the power of R1 plus power of R2 plus power of R3 plus power of R4 plus power of R5. It doesn't matter. You can look at it this way. If this is dissipating a certain amount of energy per unit time, which is power, and that's dissipating energy at a, at a particular rate of, of dissipation, and this is and this is, you just add them all up, and that's how much energy is being lost. It's great. Now, we can also apply these guys, and this is really cool because Solving puzzles, I like to solve puzzles, puzzles with these things. Uh, at the end of this, I'm going to put two links to, um, to one link to just, just another video I did just describing unpacking series parallel circuits with voltage divider and current divider. And the other is um, I'm going to do a video of just solving puzzles, just how to figure out what to do. And power really helps quite a bit in solving puzzles. In this case, what I want to know is I want a new uh, power of R1. So the power of R1 here. Well, um, uh, I can, there's so many different ways to do this, but essentially I'm going to find the current through R1 and um, if I know the resistance, then I can easily do that. Now, how do I calculate the current through here? I just use Ohm's law. A power of R2, in this case, I find the current going through here and I know the value and, and that's that. So I can use this formula as long as I know the current going through something and I know the resistance of that thing. Now. Power in all resistors, what if I knew, um, if I knew the current through here and I knew the current through here, I could just, I could just go ahead and do that. Now, if I knew the, now that I know the power of all of these, I can just add them up. It's so cool. I can just add, I calculated the power here, I can add it up, I calculated the power here, I can add it up and add it up. Now I can just add it all up. And the total power is going to be this, but I can also use V squared over RT. There you go. I can use VT. The, the VS, pardon me, the total voltage over the total resistance, the total voltage squared over the total resistance, so that's going to give me power. It's really, really cool. So now, troubleshooting faults in um, parallel circuits. This is important that we just cut, stop and pause on this before I let you go. And that what's going to happen here is if I were to um, have a fault here, if there was a short here or if there was a fault, if this was an open circuit here, the resistance would change quite a bit and the current would change quite a bit. For instance, if this opened up, the current out of the battery would be less because there's one less thing pulling current from the battery. If I were to um, short this, what would happen if I shorted it? The total resistance would be zero and the current would go all the way. The current would be infinite because the total resistance would be zero. Really? Yeah. Why would the total resistance be zero? If I were to short this across here, that short would have a resistance of zero. And we know that the total resistance of any parallel circuit is going to be less than any one of the resistors. And if one of the resistors has a resistance of zero, the total resistance is zero. And that means the current is infinite. But um, there's just a bunch of different ways that we can unpack which of these is faulty by studying the current. And over here, we have a situation here where if I wanted to know the total current, uh, I would, if I calculated the current here, calculated the current here, calculated the current here, and I knew the current, and I knew that this was the current that should be going through, but I actually had a different value that was going through, um, I had this guy, then I know that there's a problem. So that's just a little bit about, you know, shorts in parallel circuits. And I just wanted to say, if you have a series parallel circuit and there's a short across the entire parallel element, then that's a problem. Uh, let me just go back to this circuit over here and let's take a look at shorts. Um, if I shorted from here to there, that actually wouldn't be a problem. I mean, it would increase current because this leg here would then draw less current or more current. Think about it. If I shorted this, this guy was no longer part of it and that guy was no longer a part of it. This portion here, its resistance would become zero. So the total resistance of this would actually be less. So the current would go up. So the current would go up. But I mean, I'm going to put a fuse in here. It may blow, it may not, depending on how much the current is going to go up. But if I were to, let's even, you know what, let's just do this. If I were to short from here, if I were to short R2, 
That means that this, these two legs, their total resistance would be zero. The total resistance of this would be zero and this because they're in parallel. So R2 is in parallel with this whole thing. So the total resistance of the parallel element in this circuit would be zero. But still, I'm still not going to have infinite current because I have a resistance here. I'm definitely going to blow a fuse. The current's going to go up considerably, or will it go down? Well, think about it. If I were to short this out and it became zero, then the current would, would actually, I'm sorry, the resistance would go down. So, oh yeah, the current would go up. Yeah, no matter what, if you're shorting something in a circuit, typically the current is going to go up. Can I say typically? I can't imagine a situation where you short out a component in a circuit where the current doesn't go up. But with a series parallel circuit, it could go to infinity. If, in, in, For instance, if I shorted here to there, it would go to infinity. Um, but um, we know that in a parallel circuit, if you short any resistor in a parallel circuit, the current goes to infinity. If I short a resistor in a series circuit, the current's going to go up, but not, you know, we don't know how much it's going to be, but it's not going to go to infinity. In this case, same thing here. If I were to short this parallel element, the current's going to go up, the total current's going to go up, but maybe even not enough to blow the fuse. But I, I don't know what the fuse is or what the numbers are here. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just a matter of perspective. So I think what the, the big theme here with these parallel circuits, parallel series circuits, is that when we're applying Ohm's law, and we're applying all of these other thoughts, like how we short, what happens if we short an element? How we use the voltage divider, how we use the current divider, and where does Kirchhoff's laws fit in? It's important to analyze a particular part of the circuit. Imagine that, that you know, when I was saying this was shorted, I'm just taking this little portion of the circuit and I'm studying just that, and then I'm kind of sticking it. After it changes, I stick it back in. Um, that was for shorting, or however I want to do. If I wanted to use the current divider formula here, I could. If I wanted to use the current divider formula to see how much current R4 and R5 are drawing, I would find out how much current is going through R3, and then I would find out the, uh, the resistance of this and this, and my total resistance would be the total resistance of the two, just that, just R4 and R5, because they are dividing the current. So my current divider formula here, if I wanted to know how much current was going for, through R4, if I knew the current going through R3, I would say that would be that would be my IT. So my IT going into here is divided amongst here and here. My RT is going to be R4 in parallel with R5. And then my R, whichever one I'm looking at, would be my R4. So it would be it would be IT, which would be the current going in, times RT, which is R4 in parallel with R5, divided by R4. And that would give me the current through R4. So I think we're good. I think we're good to move on. And um, if you want, you can continue watching that other video um, about just find solving puzzles with these things. And that's it. Okay, bye.